Welcome to SSAT's webinar on embedding formative assessment. With me today, I have two colleagues from two very different schools. Both were part of the Education Endowment Foundation's research trial on the Embedding Formative Assessment Programme and are now both Embedding Formative Assessment mentors. So joining me in this webinar, I would like to introduce you to Claire Taylor, Department Leader for English at Helsby High School in Cheshire. Claire, if you could tell us a little bit about your school. Oh, hi. Um, it helps me a community secondary school. We're 11 to 18. Um, we have about 1,300 students um, and um, it's a really lovely place to work with great staff and students. Thanks, Claire. Um, I'd also like to introduce you to Sanaka Galadera, Assistant Head Teacher at Kingsford Community School in Beckton in East London. Sen, tell me a little bit about Kingsford. Hi there, Karine. Yeah, so Kingsford's in East London. It's right in the heart of East London. And we have about 1,500 plus students. Um, so really, it's a co-educational co school. Um, and it's a really diverse school in, in a lovely community. And I think that word community really kind of is at the heart of it. So um, it really kind of builds in the parents, students, um, everyone, the staff all together as well. Thank you. So we're here today to talk about formative assessment and of course there are two certainties when it comes to teaching. We don't know what they already know and they don't learn what we teach them. We've all been in classrooms planning careful lessons, brilliantly executed and the students come back the next day and of course we wonder if they're actually in the same room as at the same time. Formative assessment is constant. It's about teaching from where the student is it's about responding to our students' needs. It's about making decisions and modifying what we do, almost that engine repair in flight, in the classroom, live as we move through the lesson. The Embedding Formative Assessment Programme was originally produced in 2009 by Professor Dylan William and Siobhan Leahy. And the original programme looked like this. Now I show this to everybody because it's a programme that was very well bought across the country and across the world. But in fact, I would suggest that it wasn't particularly well used or widely used across the country. The programme today now looks like this. It's a two year programme of monthly teacher learning community workshops. But the purpose of the programme is a whole school strategic focus on formative assessment and long term habit change in teachers. Now, through the EEF research trial completed in 2017, using 25,000 students across 140 schools, we found that schools completing the programme gained an additional two months progress on attainment eight compared to the schools that didn't complete the programme. Now, Dylan William, um, Dylan William compares this to a 25% increase in learning. Now, the purpose of the programme is about a very specific direction, a focus on formative assessment, but it's also about providing teachers with time to make those changes within their classroom practice. The programme is based upon five key things. Teachers having choice about what they work on. Flexibility to adapt techniques that work for them in their classroom and in their context. It's about small steps. It's not about jumping from technique to technique. It's about making small tweaks and changes to their practice that are really going to make a significant difference to their students' outcomes. It's about support and accountability as being two sides of the same coin. Within those workshops, teachers work together to support each other, but also to challenge each other's thinking and to hold each other accountable throughout the programme. Through the Embedding Formative Assessment Programme, all of the resources are provided. Teachers work in teacher learning communities, TLCs, of groups between eight and 14 staff. And those groups are mixed subject, mixed experience, mixed leadership. The TLC leaders are not school leaders, they're teaching staff that are keen and willing to facilitate and lead a group of staff through this programme. And then the key part of this is time between the workshops for peer observation and collaborative planning. 
Now, through the research trial, one of the key things that we did was we developed a support program for schools. And this program is focusing on the effective implementation of that program. Because one of the things that we know is with the best will in the world, teachers like students, we don't always learn what we read or what we hear. So that implementation program is about supporting schools for two full years. It's about having an EFA mentor like Claire and Sen who work with you over those two years. They train your TLC leaders. They work with your leadership to implement that program as effectively as possible. Thinking about all elements of the program, how we sustain momentum, how we build that in with appraisal, how we monitor and evaluate that with staff and students alike. Now, we're going to talk more to Claire and Sen, so I'm going to ask them a number of questions that people have asked me to ask um, a bit about their schools and also about the impact of the programme. So we're going to start with Claire. So Claire, why did your school participate in the EFA programme? Um, we've already done quite a lot of work on assessment for learning and when the opportunity came up we were really interested in, in doing that on a more formal basis but also we were really attracted by the, the CPD element of it, the fact that it was over time, it was continuous and I think the most important thing was that it was investing in staff so it was really important to staff and staff were really engaged because it was time for them to actually think about the thing that was most important to them, the sort of the teaching and learning, more importantly, the learning of the students and being in the classroom. So that's why we wanted to get involved, because we were already brought into ideas around, you know, formative assessment um, and had done work on it. But I think what was interesting was that this gave us the opportunity to make sure that that was done properly and not lip service. And I think that was quite interesting. People think they were doing um, formative assessment but when they had the chance to reflect and refine and really look at it they realised that actually, no, it's not as embedded in my practice as I thought it was. And I think that was this key about the programme, that you really embed those principles of formative assessment. It's not about the showy sort of techniques. It's about actually really getting to grips with your lesson planning um, and really understanding where the students are and the learning that they're doing. And this gives you time to do it. And I think that's why we wanted to get involved with it. So, Sen, what was the key focus for Kingsford Community School? Yeah, it was a kind of similar story as well. So back in 2015, I think we identified formative assessment was going to be our key kind of strain that's going to really make the progress in our students. And we wanted to make that invest investment in teachers as well. And I think the, the EFA programme gave us that kind of structure and focus and language to make sure that, yeah, the teachers were at the forefront and we and and we knew that was our best intervention strategy is investing in teachers and having those formative assessment kind of discussions and techniques and strategies to kind of share within our school. And I think um, what we really kind of got from it was that um, they had the opportunity to take ownership themselves. So it wasn't so much. Um, here's loads of strategies. They, they could really work on the bits that they wanted to develop on a personalised level, um, but in a really nice kind of confident and comfortable environment to kind of take their practice forwards and have that impact on the pupil progress. Thank you. So Claire, um, what impacts have you seen in your teachers, your students and your school culture? Oh, that's only a big question, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> start with teachers, uh, first of all. Um, I think it was really great in the, the positivity and actually really developing conversations about learning that took place in the staff room. So I'd walk into the staff room and people would be discussing because they were working together, they were working across departments, they were sharing ideas. Um, and, you know, I think that was, that was really positive. I think the other thing that it really impacted on staff with was that openness. So anybody could come into the classroom. You weren't afraid to say, do you know what? My questioning is not quite as good as it should be. You know, would you come in and watch me and can you give me some tips? So there's a lot more sort of shared expertise and, and you know, and being happy to say, actually, I've not got this quite right yet. Um, I need to work on it. I don't think, you know, we can all improve. You know, I've been teaching for 25 years, but I can still go and do some work on something can get better. And I think that was the beauty of it. People realise it doesn't matter if you're an NQT or you had 10 years plus experience, we were all in the same boat and we all want to strive to be better. So I think the impact there is about a real sort of shared movement forward. The students, 
it really made the learning process clear to them you know oh this is where I am this is what I need to do I think it was the consistency of approach across you know across teachers because we were all sort of like you know working together and discussing things so there's a shared sort of way of delivering so the students are really happy with it and I also think um, the beauty of the program is that involvement of students so they felt really invested in the learning process um, as well and you know discussing things with with staff um, the impact on school culture has been quite massive really so um, when we got to the end of the project we created um, a seven expectations of the classroom, which all tied into the areas that we had been through on the EFA project, and they still exist. So there's a poster in the classroom. This is what students should expect. This is what staff should include. So it links into things like learning intentions and success criteria, et cetera, the feedback that we would expect the students to receive during a lesson. Um, it also links into our feedback policy. So it's a very strong part of that. So it's a policy that still exists. We keep continuing to review it. Um, the, uh, immediately after the project, we continued with the open door, which was a continuation of the peer observation element and the peer planning element of the um, project. Um, and in the last year, we've been using the TLC format for internal CPD which we have used um, and actually used the same sort of format of the meetings. And actually for staff that have joined us since we've done the project, I've actually used some of the materials from the project again. So they're still being used and reinforced. You know, it's an ongoing process. It doesn't end when the project ended. We've just continued with it. Thank you. Sen? Yes, lots of similar stories there, actually. <laughs> so um, I, th I think I won't add on to those, but I think all the points you just said, I think we we kind of follow through and we're, we're still continuing the project and that TLC model is something that um, we've really built on that we, we've actually um, from the start actually introduced like a coaching aspect to to the TLCs as well so really giving that opportunity for that ownership again between which I think is really powerful is the resource of each other as well and making sure that they've got a structure and a, a conversation that will be developmental for them and I think what you mentioned I think it's the strongest part is that yeah you had all sorts of teachers and responsibilities all within one TLC but with one common goal in terms of teaching and learning was the priority and and like you mentioned the experience we could all keep learning and it was great to see we had some PGC students we had some newly qualified teachers working with leadership members and they were peer observing each other with with the common goal of um, that pupil impact um, and that pupil progress so yeah very very similar story and we've kept the TLC model going through forwards now um, obviously um, as the years go on like different focuses come into into play so but we use that format because um, our teachers in their evaluation really appreciated that time to kind of reflect and respond without that kind of top-down accountability but um, but to have that accountability of the pupil progress so and they were kind of taking the accountability into their own hands of I oh, know I want to make this better or and, and not sticking to some of the things um, and evaluating and I think sorry just one last point was some of the so our more experienced teachers actually kind of developed that hang about some of the things I did about 15 20 years ago is something that maybe I stopped doing but now I need to I can bring that back and it, it gave them the freedom to say yes you can do that and um, yeah let's go get some feedback and let's make it even more effective as well so I think it gave them a bit more ownership in terms of um, and that kind of power to say yeah the things I did before was was right and maybe some of the stuff I've started recently might not be working. So it gave them that opportunity to reflect. Brilliant. Thanks, Sen. So, Sen, continuing with you then, what would you say has been the long term impact of this programme? Because we're now we're now coming up to five years on from when we started the programme. Yeah. So. Um, so, yeah, our feedback policies obviously changed quite rapidly since we started. So um, but it's given a really good foundation since that that time and it's given lots more strategies in terms of feedback. So, um, for example, in, in, in the bed informative assessment, we talked a lot about marking them when we were in 2015. And we came into a really good place where we're giving feedback to the students, making really good progress. Um, but where we look where we are now is now we have a wide variety of strategies. Um, it kind of takes into consideration workload. It takes into consideration the pupil impact and it's given a wide range of kind of activities where we can see that impact of students in a really kind of efficient and effective way. And 
the TLCs are given that opportunity to share it much, uh, much clearer within the whole community of the school. So we've got a really kind of streamlined approach to um, feedback now across the school, but not limiting to anyone. So there's lots of different strategies of how you can get that feedback. So it's given people confidence that how to do that. Um, I think one of the areas that we really want to do is stretch and challenge. So I think questioning in the school has been one area that we've really developed over the over the years. And using, again, the, the format that we had and some of the, the resources available, we've really been able to kind of push the, the, the stretch and challenge of our most able students, especially in the questioning part, where it's quite easy to fall in the trap of asking lots of questions just to just to make us feel good, actually, that, that they have learned something. But it's really thinking about the, the, the questions are going to get the students to think and we're going to get them to challenge. So I think that's really helped and that's pushed our our teachers to really push the most able students to the highest ability they can be. Thanks, Sen. So, Claire, what do you feel has been the long -term, long term impact at Helsby? Um, I think I'd agree with Sen regards feedback. And I think it's interesting we're talking feedback policies and not marking policies, and I think that's absolutely vital. And in fact, actually, written sort of marking is a very small part of that, and I think that's really important. It's feedback on the spot, which is what you need. Um, and I think the fact is that five years on, we've got that as common practice and common expectation. And I think that's a, you know, an important sort of like legacy um, from the from the project. Um, I suppose really, we, you know, I'd agree with Sen about different sort of focuses come up, but formative assessment is still there. And we've now moved to only two summative data drops a year, which I think is fantastic because, you know, and really important. And that's, you know, an, a knock on from the work that we've done from the project, um, which I think is really pleasing. But also, you know, we've talked about the TLCs, but we still come back to some of the areas of the, the project, even when dealing with new focuses. So we this year we've had a focus on vocabulary. We've had a focus on retrieval practice and looking at learning intentions and success criteria. But all of those three areas we have linked to the work that we did with the embedding formative assessment project. And I suppose now we're talking formative assessment because we we have embedded it. And that's that's the legacy of the five years that that's still continued. Um, and I think that's really important. I think it's interesting um, what Sam was saying about, you know, starting. Oh, I did this ages ago. I think what the project does is that it really highlights those teaching strategies and principles that actually do work. And that's the whole point. And that was the point of doing a research project that, you know, we know that they work. And if they do work, then we should be using them. We don't have to you know, find something shiny all the time. Um, and it's that consistent use of those skills. And I would say that that's the legacy. Five years on, we've got consistent use of those skills. And teachers value that time. The most effective CPD is internal CPD, which you deliver. So the project gave us that, you know, that structure that we can work with staff in our setting for our students. And I think that choice staff feel really valued. Oh, I've chosen to work on this. This is the area. I'm not going to try and do 20 things at once. I'm really going to refine this area of practice because it will really help the, the students, the kids that I teach. Um, and I think that's that's really important. So, you know, it's been it's been great. Thanks, Claire. So, Sen, as a school leader, how do you feel the programme has sort of influenced your thinking about professional development? Yeah, and I think I think when I even when I started training, I was very much used to kind of sitting in a, a big hall and someone kind of um, talking to you. And even though that was very informative, it was obviously even my attention span would switch off at points as well. So I think I think in, in charge of kind of professional development in our school, I think that format of um, having TLCs, having that cross curricular kind of discussions has been so powerful and um, a bit exactly what Claire said is given them kind of ownership and the ability to work on the things that they need to develop. So it's a bit more personalised to, to the person, um, but it's kind of um, got an umbrella effect of here's lots of different strategies and lots of different kind of activities that, that you could be doing. Um, the, in terms of um, kind of moving it forward, I, I think Obviously, we're using lots of coaching techniques and um, the TLCs 
um, is trying to kind of embed that with some of our newly qualified teachers and new staff that join in as well. So we're just looking at aspects how we can use now with five years down the line, using so much experience and wealth to really share that good practice with new members of staff coming in, newly qualified teachers, PGC students. So and we're really excited about that project and kind of using that going forwards as well. Brilliant, thank you. Claire, anything to add in terms of your thinking about professional development? Um, I, you know, I think I'd sort of like echo um, what Sen has been saying um, and obviously in my previous answer as well. But I think it's the idea that it's collaborative and it's that time that you're investing in staff. And that's how it shaped my thinking, that there should always be time and that that cross curricular idea of the TLC is really, really important because it's amazing that staff will say well I don't use you know multiple choice questions because that doesn't suit my subject but then as soon as they've realized by talking to somebody else who uses them all the time actually it's really powerful it's a really quick way um, of me finding out exactly what you know the learning of the students has been and yes I can apply that and it's showing that expertise so I would say I think I, you know the cross curricular collaborative element is absolutely key and staff talking to each other and, and sharing ideas and having that time with each other. I think, we, you know, that's really important. And I suppose what the TLCs really and the programme set in place, the project set in place was we make time for this. And there is time allocated where you get time to think about your teaching and what your how you might impact, you know, these ideas in your teaching. And, you know, even though we might have slightly different focuses, that's the key thing that we take forward. Um, and that's really important because I think one of the most powerful things when we went to some of the meetings um, when when Dylan was talking was this idea that teachers, are, you know, if you if you support your teachers, if you, you know, help your teachers to be better, that is where, you know, you should invest because then that will be the, the outcomes for your students and the impact for your students will be so much better. And I think that's really important. Um, and that that value, you know, making sure that your staff feel valued and they get a choice. So it can be about, you know, what they need to work on, because we don't sort of we're not a finished product, are we? When we come out of, you know, our PGCEs or, you know, our degrees, we're not, you know, fully rounded teachers. We're still we're still learning. And I think this is it allows that freedom to say, oh, actually, yeah, I still need to work on this. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Claire. So one final question from me. Um, as a secondary school, perhaps just about to embark on this project or thinking about embarking on this program, what advice would you give, Sen? OK, so, yeah, so I think um, we, we mentioned about you, you get uh, plenty of support from the SSAT in terms of the, the, the kind of EFA lead practitioners. And I think um, I think it's yes yeah, speaking to other schools it, maybe they've done the program and speaking to the the efa lead practitioners but it's really thinking about that that rationale why you would be getting into the program and um that vision where you see it so really thinking about that kind of strategic outcomes that you want to get from it um obviously you've probably reflected on your your own school at, at that time so it's really kind of see what the outcome that you want to get from it and then in terms of the kind of logistics is the, the support you get from the efa lead practitioners and the resources is kind of all there so that's the um it's kind of there to support and obviously it can be tweaked depending on your strategy and your rationale um, but I think the the support that's provided by the SSAT is all kind of there to kind of support that that over those two years and I think you, you mentioned it in your introduction as well is um, just having that kind of vision that it is not going to be fixed overnight in terms of like breaking habits and kind of embedding things and I think we were very upfront about that at the start when we launched that we knew it was going to be a two-year program or a long long kind of term program so it's just making sure that strategy rationale and then an overview of where you want to take it and then I think in terms of logistics the resources and the support you get from the SSAT it will, it will kind of um, guide you through that those two years with no problems and you can make it very specific to your school which is which is the bit that I liked. Thanks, Thanks Anne. Anne. Um, I think I'd echo all of those points um, a couple of other things I might add is think that if you're the person that's going to be running the program in your school think very carefully about your choices for your TLC leads because that's absolutely crucial to making sure that it all works really well and really make sure that you've got the support so that you've got the time. It's really important to give the programme the, the time because if you invest that time, 
then you're going to reap the benefits. We did. Um, and it had a very positive impact for us. And I think that's that's really, really important. I'm going to throw one final question at you, because obviously, you know, in the current situation that we're in with COVID and students re uh, returning to school in September, I very strongly feel that formative assessment now is more important than it's ever been. The students that left us in March are not going to be the same students that return to us in September. So what do you think are going to be those priorities in terms of formative assessment as you do return in September? Claire? I think immediately, particularly for some of our key sort of students who we, we know we've got to prepare for an exam very quickly, we need to get in there straight away. So we need to be asking the right sort of questions to determine what they've managed to pick up while they've been working at home remotely. And we need to address that immediately. So it has to be, you know, really responsive teaching. We really need to respond to what we're getting, um, you know, the feedback from in the classroom. And I think that's really important. And that's why the planning and those learning intentions are really important because the kids need to know what they're going to be learning or what we need to work on. But we need to be able to adapt from that so that we're actually putting the focus on the areas that they are struggling with. So it is personalised so we can help all of them to sort of catch up if they need to or to stretch, to push them. So I think that's really, really important. And, and the students, I think there are some ways that we can support that at home by making sure that they understand what they've got to be learning, what the success criteria are. So And a lot of flipped learning so that we're doing those things at home so that actually in the classroom we can pick up on those areas where they are struggling or where we've discovered that there is a gap and that's going to be really important and I think it's it's you know we've got to be responsive and there has to be flexibility within a department for a class because different students are going to be at a different place and I think that's you know our staff need to be prepared for that so I think it's going to be absolutely crucial um, in in ensuring that the kids get the best deal possible because they've, they've had a really tough time of it and um, you know I think they'll be glad to get back into school and, and get working again. Thanks Claire. Sen anything to add? Yeah Doug, again I would echo all those points and I think we're quite lucky that we've been part of this program so we've already got a range of strategies. Um, the, the only thing I was going to add is that what we found even when we've been teaching remotely and um, having like Google Meet sessions or wherever, however people have been kind of liaising with their students. I think we found that the AFL kind of the formative assessment strategies have actually been the ones that have been engaging the students because there's a wide variety of ways of you can kind of get them engaged. So I think going into kind of when we start in September, I think not only would it is, is going to be crucial, like Claire said, it's also going to get the students engaged in their learning and um, and then and it's not trying to do it in one way. We've got so many different strategies and lots of different techniques to really get them engaged in their activities and take responsibility for their learning. Um, and yeah, so that, that is on the forefront of our minds that, that it's going to be a vital aspect of teaching and learning going into next year. Brilliant. Can I just say a massive thank you to both Claire and Sen for taking time out of the very busy schedules at the moment um, to be with us today. Um, if you would like to engage further with the EFA programme, um, I will just briefly put a slide up. Um, so if you'd like to get in touch to learn more about the EFA programme, then please do get in touch with us at efa at ssat.co.uk and we're more than happy to bring more schools onto the program um, as we go through the next year so thank you very much to sen and claire again um, i wish you all a very good holiday thank you bye-bye <laughs>